If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, thank you for coming out on a cool, wet morning, and uh, we praise God uh, that you are here. Today I want to talk to you about the Antichrist, the Antichrist. And you know, there's a lot of questions, and the most asked question I get, which I got this week and I got last week also, are you going to reveal who you think the Antichrist is? And the answer is no. Okay, number one, I don't think anybody really knows, okay? And here's the deal about saying things. When you predict it and you're wrong, all right, you better be careful about some of the things there because some people would see you as a false prophet if you predicted something and not come true. So I'm simply saying uh, God knows who they are. God knows when we are going to find out. He'll reveal it to us. And I will say at this point, it will be obvious. Okay, when you see and you uh, see and hear what we are talking about today, uh, it would be obvious. If you want to follow along with us uh, in taking notes, number one, his authority. His authority. And I'll just give you a hint right here, straight from Satan, okay? His authority is straight from Satan. Number two, his arrogance. His arrogance to have the audacity to say he is God is horrible. It's, it's terrible. It shows his spiritual ignorance. All right? And number three, his admirers. And here's what gets me. There are going to be a lot of people worshiping him. And they will be deceived, folks. They will be deceived. You know, in the chaotic times of confusion and certainty uh, during the Great Tribulation, the world will be looking for a leader. They will be looking for hope and peace from a leader that can unite the people and bring them back from the brink of disaster. These longings will be fulfilled in the person of the Antichrist. At first, he will bring unity and peace and prosperity to the world. But over time, everyone will realize that this di dictator will be more cruel and more powerful than any leader this world has ever known. The description of the Antichrist and his purpose is seen in the 13th chapter of Revelation. He will make a pact with Israel for seven years, but halfway through that time, he will break his covenant uh, with Israel, attack the Jewish, and attack the Jewish people. He will then set himself up to be worshipped by all of mankind. Let's look at this fascinating scripture in our text today. The Antichrist, number one, his authority. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. While in this particular place, the Antichrist is not named as the Antichrist. In the book of Revelation, he is seen as the beast. But there are other places in the, in the New Testament that say uh, he is the Antichrist. Matter of fact, one of them is 1 John. Look with me at 1 John chapter 2. 1 John 2, 18. Little children, it is the last hour. And folks, I am telling you, we are living in the last days. There is no doubt in my mind with what's going on in Israel and looking at the Word of God. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. And there'll only be one Antichrist, and it will be a person, okay? But there are already many Antichrists in our world. In the Antichrist, you know, plural that I'm talking about is the spirit of the Antichrist. And I tell you, we, we witnessed it this week as, as a man would uh, take a rifle, and he'd go into a skating rink and just start shooting up people. He killed 18 people. 13 were wounded. Four still on life support. Folks, that is the spirit of the Antichrist. And you have to understand, this is before the rapture of the church and all that, so it is going to be much, much worse when the Antichrist comes into power. Now look at verse 22 who is a liar, but who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. 
And you have to realize, folks, antichrist means against God. He hates God. He hates everything God stands for. He hates Jesus Christ. He hates the persons of the Trinity. And when you think about the Trinity, he even masked Satan in him masked an unholy Trinity. We've already said that the dragon is Satan. The Antichrist also will come on the scene. And then next week, we will talk about the false prophet. And the very thing they're mimicking is the Trinity. And we see that uh, here in Scripture. Other names for the Antichrist, the king of Babylon, Lucifer, the ruler who will come, Little Horn, a stern-faced king, a mighty king, a man of lawlessness, a man doomed to destruction, the man of sin, and the willful king. Another thing that everybody asks me is, uh, you have any idea what this man's nationality is going to be? And many believe, and again, I told you, I'm not predicting this, but in everything that I've read this past week, many believe he will have a Roman, Grecian, and Jew bloodline. All of those. And uh, you can see in Scripture, uh, there is support of that. And you must understand how the Antichrist works. He will promote a one world government. The European common market uh, will probably be in on that also. He will be a world leader. Uh, he will uh, act, you know, in good for the people, but he, he really has only himself. That's all he's thinking about is his own life. So a one world government, a one world currency. I've noticed, and I've heard this lately, there's a company up, and I believe it was in the uh, uh, Illinois, and when you, uh, when you go and you go to their break room to purchase things, you can't do it with cash. They have always, already asked their employees to microchip themselves and put a microchip in themselves so that they can wave their arm across and, and do the exchange there. So we already see that happening uh, in the internet. I'm just telling you, folks, it is going to blow up. It's going to be a form of communication. The euro dollar is something else that is already in place. So it'll be a one world government, a one world currency, and a one world religion. They are pushing also a one world church. Folks, there's only one church, and it is God's church. It is the New Testament. It is Acts chapter 2. And anything else, we don't need to be a part in. And the reason is because their actual religion will be atheism. Okay, they don't believe in God. They don't believe in God. They, they even the Antichrist will want you to think he is God. And in the Bible, the word Antichrist can be used in four different ways. One, an evil empire or a political power. Number two, an evil spirit of the present day. Number three, literal people who are forerunners of the final Antichrist. And I showed you that in 1 John. And four, the final or the last embodiment of Satan's power or opposition to God and Jesus. I believe with all my heart, the Antichrist will be a gifted speaker highly intelligent, have much charisma, will be a great leader, and he'll have a magnetic personality. People will follow him. And then the last thing I want to see in our introduction, inside of your bulletin, there is a list of contrasts, the Antichrist and Jesus Christ. Number one, Christ came from above. The Antichrist will descend from the pit. Two, Christ came in his Father's name. The Antichrist will come in his own name. Three, Christ humbled himself. The Antichrist will exalt himself. Four, Christ was despised. The Antichrist will be admired. Five, Christ will be exalted. The Antichrist will be cast down to hell. Six, Christ came to do his Father's will. The Antichrist will come to do his own will. Seven, Christ came to save. The Antichrist will come to destroy. 
Eight, Christ is the good shepherd. The antichrist is the idle, evil shepherd. Nine, Christ is the true vine. The antichrist is the vine of the earth. Ten, Christ is the truth. The antichrist is a lie. Eleven, Christ is the holy one. The antichrist is the lawless one. Twelve, Christ is the man of sorrows. The antichrist is a man of sin. Thirteen, Christ is the son of God. The antichrist is the son of perdition. And fourteen, Christ is the mystery of godliness. God manifested in the flesh. The antichrist will be the mystery mystery of iniquity, Satan manifested in the flesh. So we see these things about the Antichrist. His authority. Then I stood back in our text on the sand of the sea and saw a beast rising out of the sea. In the sea here, I believe it's talking about the Gentile world. The Gentile world. Having seven heads, ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. And we've seen the first three descriptions there already. Uh, We were talking about uh, the seven heads, uh, the seven world empires, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Roman, and the Antichrist kingdom. And there are many writers that I have read this week that thinks it'll be a revival of the old Roman empire also. So that's the seven head. The ten horns are the ten kings, the ten kings uh, that will be coming, and they will uh, make a pact with the Antichrist, and he will follow them. And then the blasphemous names. Uh, folks, I'm just telling you, he will blaspheme God. He, he would probably put on his crown, Almighty God. And folks, that's blasphemous. And he will, I mean, it'll be worse than that. Uh, even I believe with all my heart. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like a bear, and his mouth was like a lion. And here I think this uh, represents three kingdoms also. Uh, The leopard uh, speaks of speed and viciousness, and uh, the Greeks uh, were this way. The bear is strength and stability. The Medo-Persians were that way. And the lion also was fierce and uh, powerful. And I believe that is talking about the Babylonians. And these will be people that will support him. And the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and his and great authority. So Satan is the dragon. Authority means you can do, you do what you want to do. He'll be under the guidance of Satan, but he will give him a lot of authority. And then you see great authority and also power. Uh, He will be a powerful man. And I saw one of the heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. What does he like to do? He likes to mimic miracles of God. You remember earlier in in uh, Revelation, Moses and Elijah was killed and laid in the street, and they were resurrected. You can think about the uh, resurrection, and uh, we know, and everything that we stand for stands uh, with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So he's taking himself and putting himself in place of Jesus. And it says, Uh, And his head had been mortally wounded, and deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worship. Folks, you have to understand, the next thing on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. And when the church is raptured, think about how our world is now. You take every Christian out of here, folks, there's going to be no rules. It'll be the law of the jungle. It will be the survival of the fittest. All right? And and by the time he gets into power, it'll be much, much worse than that. Verse 4, So they worshiped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? He will line these ten kings up. And uh, they will literally not rule just 
that area, they will rule the world. And that's not hard to believe at all. I can be sitting in Fort, Fort Smith, uh, Arkansas, and I can talk to someone in Japan. You know, I mean, immediately I get them on, what's that called when you, when you get them on the screen there? FaceTime. Yeah, thank you. All right. I don't have my flip phone with me. I would show you. Okay. <laughs> I'm simply saying it's going to be easy to get, gather people and to send messages out and for him to rule the world. Second, th- Second Thessalonians 2. Look at se- Second Thessalonians with me. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And we talked about that in Matthew chapter 24. And the man of sin is revealed. The son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He will desecrate the temple. He will carve his own image out and, uh, you know, and have a huge idol there. He will rule from the temple, which again, folks, is just totally against uh, God and, and what God stands for, showing himself that he is God. Listen to me, folks. There's only one God, and it is Jehovah God of this Bible. Do not, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. And that's what I'm saying. There's a restraint, straining going on right now. But when he gets to, into power, I'm telling you, he'll be free to do anything thing he wants to do. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with brightness of his coming. And of course, that's at the end, uh, you know, uh, where the second coming of Christ is, and he will destroy Uh, the Antichrist in his kingdom. Then it says in verse 9, the coming of the lawless one is according to the work of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Satan is a liar. And with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason... God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Because of the world situation, because you will have to have the mark of the beast if you want to trade and to get food, which we will talk about next week, I am telling you the Antichrist will rule. He will say and everyone will be under the rule of the Antichrist. So we see his authority, his authority. Now I want you to see his arrogance. Look in verse 2. And he was given a mouth speaking great things, and blasphemy he was given authority to continue for 42 months. And that is three and a half years. And what, what we told you earlier, that the first to start the tribulation will be three and a half years of good times where he's ruling and everything seems to be going uh, fine. But all at once, he will desecrate the temple that in the next three and a half years, I'm telling you, and we'll, we'll study this even more and get into more detail as we get further into Revelation. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. His name. Folks, the Bible tells us we should not take God's name in vain. I tell you, I, 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 it just it hurts me when someone 
takes the name of God in vain. Folks, I call cussing the language of the ignorant. You need to respect God. You need to respect God's Word. And God's name is holy. God's name, you know, is above all names. Jesus' name, Philippians uh, 3 tells us, there is no other name. It's, it's, it's Jesus Christ. And the Antichrist will not care. And I will say, uh, when someone takes God's name in vain in my person, I can't let that go. Now, I, ju- I don't jump on them. I'm simply saying, please don't say that. And you know what most people say? They say, well, I forgot you were a preacher. You forgot? <laughs> Folks, you shouldn't say that to anyone. You should not. It's, it's against God's principle. So they'll blaspheme His name, His tabernacle, which we've already talked about, in those who dwell in heaven. He will not care about Christians. We've already said that 144,000, then there will be a, revi- there'll be a revival uh, in the first half of the Trinity, the, the first half of the tribulations. And I'm telling you, he could care less about somebody getting saved. Matter of fact, in that day, you, you are going to have to stand. I mean, right now, we as Christians in America, we, again, you're not talking about persecution like in wor- third world countries. I mean, I, did, I don't call uh, someone calling you a goody goody two shoes or a you know, a Bible-thumping Christian, I don't call that persecution, okay? Matter of fact, uh, you know, I've I've got a shirt that says on it, it has a Harley in them right at the front, and it says, Jesus freak. It is a compliment when somebody calls me a Jesus freak. And my words is, I'm glad you noticed. But Satan will blaspheme God. And folks, I'm just telling, and he'll blaspheme God's people. Look at verse 7. And it was granted to him to make war with the saints and overcome them. He will have a special target on those who are saved during the tribulation period. And you know what I say? If you cannot accept Jesus Christ in this time, in this age, folks, we live in the day of grace. Nobody's going to come to your home looking for Bibles. We're not in an underground church. We're not in a third world country where you can be shot for witnessing. If you can't do it when we live in this age, you sure not going to do it when all this breaks out. So we need to stand for God in Christ in all situations. And authority was given to Him over every tribe, every tongue, in all nations. And that's why I said he will be a worldwide dictator. Let's look in Daniel chapter 7. I told you we would always look at Old Testament prophecy of the very things that are coming true in Revelation. Daniel chapter 7, verse 23. And a fourth beast uh, shall be a fourth kingdom on earth. And I, I do believe this he is talking about the time of the Antichrist, and which will be different from all other kingdoms. And he shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it into pieces. The ten horns are the ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after them. And he shall be different from the first ones. And he shall subdue three kings. And we'll talk about that uh, later on in Revelation. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High and shall persecute the saints of the Most High. And he shall intend to change times and laws. Folks, I am telling you, the Christian will live in fear. We'll live in fear in that day because he is so fierce. He is so arrogant. He is so bloodthirsty. Then the saints shall be given to his hands for a time and times and half a time, which is three and a half years. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it forever. Oh, folks, I know a judge. 
I know a righteous judge. I know a judge and I know a, a deity that is going to make all things right. And that is Jesus Christ, our Savior. 27, then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. And His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey Him. And I believe this is talking about the thousand-year reign here on earth. Satan and the Antichrist in them, they will be thrown into the abyss to be locked up for those thousand years, and we'll, we'll talk about that also later. So we see his authority. We see his arrogance. Now let's see his admirers. His admirers. You know, one thing I just, as you know, I try to think of how to put this. There are things that was, when I was a kid that you just didn't talk about. There were things that you didn't publicly say. There are things that you just didn't do. And now you can turn on the television and if you watch the mainstream television, you will see the promotion of homosexuality very soon. When I was growing up, there was something called a blue law. And I didn't, I had to ask my dad, what's the blue law? I keep hearing this blue law. And do you want that blue? You older folks know what I'm talking about. You didn't open a business on Sunday. It was God's day. It was the Lord's day. And I'm just telling you, we went to church. But it's going to change, folks, the further we get. I mean, even, even in commercials, I can be watching a football game with Jonathan and my grandson, and something will come on. And, and I saw it happened, and I, I mean, I just literally had to stop and tell Keegan, we don't do that. Two men were kissing, lip to lip. And I'm telling you, folks, it is not godly, all right? And I don't hate the homosexual community. They need Christ like everyone else. But my point is, what used to be done, you know, in closets, and what used to be done under the, the thing of, of night is now everywhere and we need to understand we should not laugh at or glorify sin we should not do that and we should not be a part of that we should not give our monies to things like that and this is part of the admirers look at verse 8 and all who dwelt on the earth will worship him and again all normally is all inclusive but he, they're not talking about those Christians, all right, that, that, that were still on earth. And it says, whose names have not been written in the book of life, slain from the foundation of the world. Seven times in the New Testament, the, the word book of life is written. And folks, that's what happens. Uh, uh, you're going to see in just a few minutes, I was talking to a lady this week and uh, we just were visiting, and uh, basically, uh, we come to the conclusion that she was not sure about her salvation. And I remember looking her in the face and saying, after she prayed the prayer, matter of fact, she grabbed my hands when we started praying, and I thought she's going to break my hands. I mean, I'm not trying to embarrass her in any way. This girl got it, okay? And what I'm saying is, here, and, and all that is going there. She was so happy. She was so excited about her name being written in the Lamb's book of life. And folks, we ought to be excited about that too. Slain from the foundation of the world. I don't have time to go to Ephesians chapter 1. Matter of fact, it would take more than one Sunday to talk about predestination and all that entails. And we, we will probably do that at a later time. Now look at verse 9. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. And you know what happens a lot of times? We got two ears and we don't hear. I mean, it says, if you even got one ear, 
You need to listen to what God says. You know that statement in the New Testament is written 15 times? Jesus Himself said it many times. Listen to the Word of God. Look around and see what this world is turning into. And folks, I'm not trying to be a doomsday guy. I'm, I'm, I'm what I call a realist. This stuff is going to happen. This is biblical prophecy, and we need to prepare our hearts and our minds for it. So if anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. What is he talking about? He's talking about the Antichrist. Man, he's going to throw people in jail. He's going to kill people. All right? But guess what? For a thousand years, he'll be locked up. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. He will die and spend an eternity in hell according to Revelation chapter 20. Now here's, here's the thing. I love it when they end a or in, into space like this. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. And another word you could put in here is perseverance. Listen to me, church. No matter what goes on, they cannot take away your faith and they cannot take away your soul. It doesn't matter how bad it gets. I am telling you, when your name is written in the land books of life, that is in God's book and nothing can take that away from you. And I think the thing, more than anything about the Antichrist is he will make everyone live in fear. Live in fear. 365 times in the Word of God, the Bible tells us to fear not. Don't fear. So if you're saved, man, I'm telling you, you are sealed. God has written your name down. You should not fear anything. You should not be afraid of anything because God has got you in His hands. Isaiah 43. Again, I want to go to the Old Testament. Isaiah 43. But now thus saith the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and He formed you, O Israel, fear not. There's one of those 365s. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Folks, we are children of God. He knows your first, middle, and last name. He knows the hairs that are on your head. He knows what you're thinking right now. And he's looking at some of you saying, don't worry about where you're going to eat after church. <laughs> Verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall uh, not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned nor scorched. The, the flame shall not scorch you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In the last scripture, and I'm done. Romans 8. Romans 8, 31. Now, if I get to shouting here, I'm pretty sure I won't jump off the stage because I'll hurt myself. But folks, this is some of the most positive, uplifting promises from the Word of God in the Word of God. What shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Folks, it doesn't matter what other people think. It only matters what God thinks. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Folks, it's just going to be you and God and Jesus. You standing before God in Jesus. Who is the one that condemns? We know that. Satan will condemn you. Satan will say, you didn't get saved. You, you, you know, you, you weren't real. You, you, you know, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. It is Christ who died and furthermore is risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who makes intercession 
for us. I got a lawyer. <laughs> and he's honest. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. I, I didn't mean that, Paul. <laughs> I just realized we had one in the audience. <laughs> Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Can I answer that for you? Nobody and nothing. Nothing can separate you from Christ Jesus. Shall tribulation, whoo, there's that word, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Man, I'm just telling you, uh, God fed his prophets you know, ravens brought him food. We're not going to starve to death, folks. It is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long, and we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Persecution is coming, okay? It's going to be bad during the tribulation. Yet in all these things, I love this, we are more than conquerors. You know, I kind of like being a conqueror. That sounds kind of cool. But being more than a conqueror? All right, that is awesome. Through him who loves us, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Folks, we win. We win. We are on the winning side. So do not fear. Do not fear. Just prepare. Just be ready. Folks, I am not kidding you. He could come today. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, would you just come down during the invitation and just let us talk to you? We're not going to try to talk you into anything. We want to share the gospel with you and share with you what Jesus has done for us. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you that even, you know, when you read this chapter and think about the Antichrist, man, it's, it's rough, Lord. It is going to be rough. But God, I thank you that we're not going to be here. Christians are not going to be here. And God, I'm just being honest here. If there's folks here that miss the rapture. God, I pray the minute they're left behind that they will fall on their knees and they will invite Jesus into their life. You can still be saved. It's never too late. But God, it'd be much easier just to turn your life over to Jesus Christ today. God, I pray for Christians. If Christians need to rededicate their life to Christ, I pray today would be the day. God, I believe with all my heart, you're putting your finger on other people's hearts, and they need to rededicate their life today. And God, I pray if they need to follow the Lord in baptism, we would love for them to do that. Or even church membership. If they have been coming and they know who we are and what we stand for, and you tell them today's the day, I pray it be so. God, this is your church. This is your time. So God, I pray that we will all come under the authority of Jesus Christ. We will all look at our own lives. Don't even think about somebody else. Think about your relationship with Christ. And God, I pray that if you speak to them, that they would move. God, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you for this time we have together. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand to your feet?